Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the DeLand Sport Aviation Showcase. I'm Dave Shelbetter. I am the uh, co-team leader of Showcase Live, which is our series of live streaming video interviews with Showcase exhibitors and sponsors and all kinds of neat people here. And we are coming to you again from the 2019 edition of Showcase. It's a little bit overcast and for a South Florida boy like me, this uh, below 60 weather is really cold, but other people are enjoying it. Now, we were set up to do an interview on our opening day, and, and through a little paperwork glitch, we, uh, we missed the interview, so we rescheduled them for today. So, but they are still here, and we still got a full day of interviews coming. So we are here at space number, and I'm gonna go I know I'm going to goof it up, so let me, 83. <laughs> that was the mistake. We, we thought they were 84, they were 83, and uh, long story. Anyhow, we are here with MagnaFlight, and I am here with Mark Sprig. And Mark, what's your position with the company? Uh, we are um, we own the company Magni Flight, and we uh, sell and do training uh, for Magni uh, SRL in in uh, Italy. Uh, it's a kit from Italy, and uh, these things are the most fun to fly. We got into this uh, several years ago, and just uh, became a instructor, flight instructor. I'm also an examiner with the uh, FAA for gyroplanes and uh, we just love flying Magnes. So we teach people to fly them, we sell them, we uh, help them with, uh, with uh, any kind of maintenance issues. Uh, a fun retirement project. Okay, now, now first of all, we're gonna clarify for people because they're seeing rotors and we, we wanna make sure people realize that this is not a helicopter, this is a gyrocopter. Please tell, me, pl tell the, the audience the difference between a helicopter and a gyrocopter. Well, they're both rotorcraft category, so you have two classes of rotorcraft. One's a helicopter, one is a gyroplane. The uh, official uh, name for it is gyroplane, according to the FAA, and this is a gyroplane class aircraft. Uh, the differences primarily are the helicopter has a powered rotor, so it has to deliver energy and power to the rotor to spin it up and pull it through the air. The gyroplane is uh, a free-spinning or autorotative rotor, and you propel it through the air with a, with a uh, prop, either a pusher prop or, or a tractor prop. And as it's moving through the air, the rotor's spinning freely. And so it's slightly tilted back and flying that way and generating lift, as opposed to pulling it through the air like a helicopter. So uh, they're both rotorcraft category. Rotorcraft uh, flying is real smooth and, and really kind of resistant to wind gust. It kind of absorbs a lot of gust energy for, for flying in the wind. And so they're really fun year round. I fly with the door off in the summer. Uh, it's comfortable in the winter. It uh, flies good in gusty conditions. I flew it here in 20 knot winds and, and a comfortable flight over, so. Well, now I heard somebody say that they had seen, they were actually at a powered parachute uh, event and the only thing flying was your gyrocopters. There were a number of your gyrocopters, no, or gyroplanes, excuse me. I've called them gyrocopters way too long. So the model we're looking at here is the M24 Orion. Is this the primary or only, or are there other models? Yeah, there are other models. Uh, I also fly an M16, which is an open tandem, and that's a trainer, a tandem trainer. And they have an M22 model, which is an open tandem uh, cross-country machine. It's got uh, luggage, uh, capacity, uh, kind of luggage strakes along the side. Um, they're working on developing uh, a, a tandem enclosed. They're always uh, doing interesting things in the factory, and and uh, it's a it's a it's a lot of fun to see what they come up with next. I happen to really like the side by side enclosed because of its all season capability. Uh, flew in some marginal weather occasionally, and going through rain, it's comfortable. Uh, doesn't beat you up as much as the open cockpit does. So, Yeah, I would imagine you're in an open cockpit in rain. It kind of feels like shotgun pellets. Yeah. Now we're looking right now, what our viewers are seeing is the, uh, the, the engine compartment and a, and a nice three-blade prop. What, what kind of power plant do you have in your bird here? This is a Rotax 914. It's the 115-horse turbo-powered engine. And uh, the M24 comes with the 914 or 915 engine, so those are the uh, engine options. Uh, we have several on order now with the 915 engine coming in, and that's the 141 horse engine. Uh, and what kind of fuel burn do you get with that engine? What do you what do you cruise? How many gallons an hour are you burning while you're cruising? Well, the 914 is uh, 
is carbureted and fuel burn at cruise. I'm cruising about 95 to 100 miles an hour on the way wow. here and burning about five and a half gallons an hour at cruise. Most of my flying is just kind of 70 miles an hour and I'm burning about four and a half gallons an hour. So they, they really, they, they just sip gas. I mean, that, that, that kind of stuff. You, talk, you go out to fly in a, in a 152. Roy, what are we burning in a 152? Nine, 10 gallons an hour in a 152? Yeah, so you're burning half as much fuel as you're burning in an aircraft. And uh, you're doing around the same speed and stuff. Actually, faster than <laughs> cruising at 100. You're faster than a 152. Now let's pan down. We have a triple rudder tail here. Tell me about the tail configuration. This is the thing that really makes the gyroplane stable. Uh, compared to the early, you talked about gyrocopter. Well, that was the trade name for the Benson. It yep. was a gyrocopter, so everybody knows these as gyrocopters. It's actually a gyroplane, but, but uh, the difference in the new modern European gyros especially is that they've got this tail mass that, that really is in the prop stream or slipstream airstream no matter what's going on. If the engine quits and it stops producing thrust, the airflow across the, and it's, and you can see by the design, it's pretty aerodynamic. The air flows right in around the cabin and across that tail. So you've got good vertical and horizontal um, mass back here on a long keel, and that provides dynamic stability. So if the engine quits, if you let go of the stick, or if anything happens, it's going to really stabilize itself. If you get real slow, you can fly it to zero airspeed, and it's, you know, it doesn't stall but it does start to settle because it wants to keep air flowing through that rotor to generate lift. So uh, it will, at zero airspeed, it will start to settle pretty briskly at, at one point. <laughs> just nose it over, get some speed back, get some air across that tail, and it just, and it just goes flying again. And um, no matter what you do with the aircraft, it's kind of resistant to the old uh, push over, bunt over, because there's enough mass back here to keep that from happening. So it's really very stable. They're easy to fly. They're fun to fly. They're economical. <laughs> Just I love everything about it. Now talk about flying them. I, I'm seeing experimental on both land on uh, both models. You have you have two model two aircraft here that are basically the same. Yep. Uh, the M24 Orion, and we've got experimentals. Are these? experimental aircraft? Are they ELSAs? Where, where do they fall in that? Yeah, good question. Uh, these are uh, experimental amateur built aircraft. So okay. it's a kit uh, from Italy and we have options for builder's assistance. Uh, we do builder's assistance in uh, Gulf Shores, Alabama at our, at our place. Or you can go to the factory in Italy and do a factory assist build there and that's a lot of fun. It's kind of a bucket list trip because you get to fly your gyro after you build it. Uh, it takes about a week to build one at the factory. Really? Yep. Just a week? Just a week. Wow. And at the end of the week, you go fly over over the foothills of the Alps and uh, Lake Cuomo and Maggiore. And it's just, it's just a beautiful country up there to fly in in northern Italy. So Now, I, but then you, you, you build it over in Italy, and then it's got to be shipped to the U.S. You can't, obviously, you can't fly across the ocean in one of these. Right. So is it more expensive to ship a completed aircraft, or is that... Part of the cost, of whether you're you're shipping the kit or the completed aircraft, I would imagine weight's going to be the same, but but the the size of the package would be different. How is the shipping costs, kit versus completed? It's really the same because you've got the rotors that come off and they're in a box, and you've got the body of the aircraft that you know takes up a certain space in the container, and you know when it when it comes in, the you know the engine is in a crate. Uh, so it doesn't matter if it's together or if it's in kit parts, you know, either way is, uh, you'll get about three or four of these into a, into a shipping container. Wow. They put it on a truck and, and take it to the coast and then they put it on a boat and they take it to New Orleans and then ship it to us from New Orleans. So, uh, we usually get three to four in at a time and that saves everybody on shipping. Now, and you, you said that you can go to Italy and build it over in Italy in a week, and we're still doing the 51%? It is, yeah, it, it's, it's built there with factory assistance, uh, and um, I've been over there a couple of times to build them there, and it's hard work. I mean, you really work hard for the whole week. It's, it's, it's uh, we start at um, 7.30 or 8 in the morning and finish up at 5 in the afternoon, and it's a, it's a week process, but you pull it right out of the paint shop and start putting it together, and 
you can do the, you know, take pictures as you're building, as you're working on over there. You've got the, the factory guys that are assisting, which is really helpful because they know everything about it. And so that way there's no mistakes in putting it together. And then you just keep your builder's log and your pictures and everything. And then, um, so, you know, it's, uh, you get credit for the build that way. Um, then it becomes uh, 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 eligible for the airworthiness inspection when we get it here. Great. Now, let's get the camera and pan up and look. You know, we're talking about this is a... It, it windmills, it's auto gyro in the wind, but I'm seeing a gear up there. What, what's the gear underneath the rotors for? Yeah, good question. That's, uh, that's for pre-rotation. Um, you want to get the rotors started spinning and, and you basically can harvest some uh, uh, power off of the engine right here with your pre-rotator assembly. So this starts this flex gear turning this cable and then it engages the ring gear up there with the Bendix and it starts it spinning. So so once it starts spinning, it gets uh, it smooths out at about uh, 130 RPM. You can ease the stick back and keep it spinning up. You can pre-rotate to 220 to 260, and then release the pre-rotator and let the wind do the rest as you're rolling down the runway. So. And how much how much does that pre-rotating? I mean, I've seen videos of other gyros where they pre-rotate up to lift point and they practically jump off the ground. It, is that capable with the M24 Orion or is that something that was specific to the one that I happen to see? Yeah, they have some gyroplanes that have uh, uh, the ability to change the collective pitch of the blade ah, and okay. so if they can change the pitch of the blade it'll jump up like a helicopter jumps gotcha. up because that's how a helicopter lifts off. It changes the pitch of the blade, it picks it up off the ground. They have some gyros like that too with uh, pitch control but it gets a lot more complicated because yeah. now you're now you're changing the pitch of the rotor. This is a fixed pitch rotor, so it really simplifies the process for us, and we prefer it that way. Uh, we've looked at trying to maybe do something with some pitch change. It doesn't gain you much of an edge. You can lift off, but you have to very quickly and be very efficient at at getting it moving to keep that rotor spinning, you know, well. So because it's not a powered rotor. Okay, so in a standard takeoff, we're we're out at the end of the runway. We engage our, our pre-rotor. Uh, we get her spinning up to what RPM? We usually spin it to at least 220 before we start rolling down the uh, runway for takeoff. Okay, and, and obviously she has brakes, so you've got, you've got the brakes set, you pre-spin, you release the brakes and you power on. How far down the runway are you gonna roll before you actually lift off? And then what, I heard somebody talking earlier about lifting off and then leveling out. So give me a, a takeoff roll and level out before you start climbing. Yeah, uh, typically a couple hundred feet before you're in the air and, and starting to level off to, to gain speed for climb. Uh, with this make and model specifically, it has such good ground handling characteristics that you can keep it on the ground till you get to 60 miles an hour or so and just climb out just like you would any other aircraft. It's pretty comfortable to fly it, for me, to fly it, uh, just, just roll it on the ground to 60 miles an hour and let it climb up that way. So it's more like a regular aircraft takeoff. You're, you're, you're getting up to rotation and then pulling off. Because I heard him talking, you can hop off the ground, then you level out for about 1,000 feet? Well, you can, uh, you can hop off the ground. It probably starts to come up about 30, 35 miles an hour, something like that. But you really got to level it off and get your speed up. So you want to get up to about 60 or so. That's your best rate of climb. And you don't need 1,000 feet for that. You, you know, if you've got a couple hundred feet to get it off the ground and, a, you know, two or three hundred more feet to level off and start to generate enough speed to climb out, um, 600 feet of runway is, is all right. We, we have a lot of guys that have these on their farm and they've got about six or seven hundred feet of, uh, of grass that they can get off the ground on and get, and get flying. So. so you don't have to have a hard pack runway. You can take off on a grass strip. That's a good, that's... Nice thing for the for the private flyer. Now, um, maybe we can look over, step over to the other M24 here. Your nice, pretty white and orange model, because she's opened up, and uh, we're looking in here. Maybe you can uh, Roy can get over here with the camera. We'll get down in, and we'll start pointing out some of the controls for the folks that are watching. Yeah, the uh, uh, control, the controls are are uh, dual, so dual controls for um, so it's a trainer. And you can see when we rotate uh, to the rotate the rotor head to the right, the stick on the right goes down. When we go left, the stick on the left goes down. It's tied to a center pivot for the control rod assembly. It makes it really simple, and uh, and it's really well built. It's a very durable control uh, 
uh, control assembly. We usually have a cable that attaches to one of the sticks just to hold the stick forward so that it doesn't flop way back and, and, uh, and hit somebody on the head when we're at an air uh, fly-in. So. Um, but it's got controls for both sides. It's got a parking brake on that side, a handbrake on this side, throttles, controls. This is the pre-rotator assembly where you grip the clutch handle on the, on the pilot side. We've got uh, our headset connections in the back with the, you know, we like to use the Bose uh, A20 headsets. Uh, they're just really comfortable, uh, good, good active noise reduction for, for just quiet flying. It's really easy to communicate with your passenger when you're here. We got the luggage bags in the back, which are kind of nice for, for taking, uh, taking things with us. I've, I, can, I can pack for uh, three or four days in one of those bags. I'm wow. used, used to doing packing light. But there's storage under the seat, there's storage in the nose, storage in the outside panel over here, and storage in the back. We're using uh, Dynon avionics in this one. Uh, we like the Dynon panels. They give us uh, engine information uh, that we need and uh, uh, primary uh, flight display and uh, GPS for travel. Uh, they're ADS-B in and out, so we can uh, see other aircraft when we're, when we're flying. And uh, I see a couple of standard gauges too, air, speed, and altitude. Yeah. And those are the primary compass up on the top of the dash there. Yeah, primary things that we use are the airspeed and the rotor speed. We look at rotor speed on the ground as being kind of our critical thing. We want to make sure our rotor speed's coming up for flight. And then after we're in the air, the airspeed is the thing that we're looking at. Well, great. So we've covered a lot about this, this beautiful gyroplane in a very short time. But what we haven't covered is what's it going to cost me to buy one? These, uh, the M24s are. Uh, Right around 95000 and then if you want to add dual dynon screens, there's lots of avionics options. Um, so if you want to add a 915 engine, which gives it a lot more horsepower, uh, that's another 10000 upgrade or so. So we base kind of 95, that gives you the basic, inf uh, basic engine um, um, information and, uh, and uh, radio transponder, that sort of thing. And then uh, if you upgrade to, to uh, glass panel, of course, uh, avionics or more. And okay, I want to I mac that. I, I want every option I can get. What, what is going to be the highest price I'm going to pay for one of these gyroplanes? Well, with the, let's say with the 915 engine, because it's real popular now. We've sold several of those. It's really a good, strong engine. 915 engine, dual dynon screens. We're talking 118,000, something like that. Yeah, that's I really was maxed guess out. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, now you're here again. We are here at the 2019 Deland Sport Aviation Showcase, and you're over here in site number 83. I got it right this time. You're going to be here through the day. Of course, the show ends at 5 o'clock today, but if somebody can't make it out, how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, we're at uh, uh, our. Our base is Gulf Shores, Alabama, Jack Edwards Airport at Gulf Shores, Alabama. We also have a website. It's gulfcoastmagnigyro.com. Gulf Coast Magni, M-A-G-N-I, gyro, G-Y-R-O.com. And uh, do you have a, a phone number you want to give out, or they just go to the website? Yeah, uh, my phone number is 573-837-5461. And I'm flying all the time, so I probably won't get back to you until I get done flying. But, uh, but give me a call, leave a message, and I'll get back to people. Well, you know, I want that job. And we have somebody else we have to introduce. So the, uh, the, the better half, is she coming out? The, the owner of the company. Hey, Kara. The owner of the company and the mascot. We have to bring the mascot out. We have to say hello. Hello, Miss Lucy. Hi, sweetie. How you doing? This is Lucy. Lucy is the official greeter here at Magni Flight. Lucy is a rescue Australian Shepherd lab mix. And, and of course, now that we've spoken with the real boss, or Border Collie, I'm sorry, Border Collie and lab mix. Now that we've spoken with the, with the lady that runs the place, let's talk to the lady that owns the place. Hey, Kara, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I thank you. And again, I apologize for the, the schedule snafu here, but we got you. And, Glad to meet Miss Lucy. She's a wonderful dog. Well, is there anything you want to add before we go? You know, I think we've really pretty well covered it. Uh, just uh, try to come see us if you can. Uh, uh, just look us up on uh, GulfCoastMagnyGyro.com uh, or give us a call or come. If you're in Pensacola, we live in Pensacola, uh, Perdido Key, uh, but we hang her at uh, Gulf Shores, Jack Edwards at Gulf Shores. So great come see us. Spot. A great vacation <laughs> spot.
<laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good good place to come visit. Uh, the kids can, wife and kids can play on the beach, and dad can fly with me. So, yeah. <laughs> well, there we go. All right. So once again, Gulf Coast Magni dot com. Magni. Magni. Magni Gulf Coast Magni Gyros dot com. And we are here with Magni Gyro with Mark and Kara Sprig, and of course the lovely Miss Lucy. Thank you very much for Showcase Live. I'm Dave Shelbetter, Roy Brewer on the camera. For all the rest of the crew, we hope everybody has a great day, and we'll be back with you soon. Take us out, Mr. Roy. <laughs>